Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back to Babe and Library. It's your girl Lisa, and yesterday was my third year anniversary on BookTube, so you know what that means, right? It is time for the mid year freakout tag. <laughs> In relation to this tag, I love it. It was one of my first videos. Actually, it was my first video of BookTube. And so I've brought it back each year. And you would think that it gets easier. However, this year was a little bit more challenging being that my reading year has been all over the place. I've had some really high highs and some really low lows. So let's go ahead and jump off with the best books that I've read so far. The two that I'm going to pick for this question, one being historical romance, which is shocking because I am not a historical romance girly. But I I have to give it up for Beverly Jenkins and her book Indigo. This one has st stood the test of time. I think it does not matter what year you read it in. This is going to be a top contender for a favorite book because this was published back in I think 1996 or 1999 and it still slaps. It hits the mark. Beverly Jenkins really struck gold with this one. You have two characters who are on the same side. They're both fighting to for the freedom of enslaved people by supporting the Underground Railroad. It's just that when, a com when they come across each other, they don't necessarily start off on the right foot. Iron sharpens iron. Hester and Daniel are the perfect match. Through reading this, I love getting to see their banter, the way that they supported each other. It did not matter if they had class difference. Hester is a working class woman. She is getting her hands dirty, doing whatever she needs to do. She is a rock solid female main character. And the Black Daniel actually comes from money, but he is willing to give all of that up for her. And I just love seeing their romance. So this is definitely one of the best books that I've read so far. Now, if you're looking for something that is more contemporary, but has emotional depth and angst, has a beautiful writing, author that can tell a story like no other, I would tell you to check out C.P. Harris, The Caretaker. I have recently identified myself as a hurt comfort seeker. Like I want all of my books to have some sort of emotional angst that brings the two together and it really solidifies their bond and that is what C.P. Harris did in this book. This I will tell you has a cheating trope so be mindful of that but these two were both cheated on. They found each other as comfort throughout their trauma and with that they grew to love each other. They are soulmates to no end and something happens to one of the characters named Solace and he loses his memory. All he thinks about is his ex wife who cheated on him and he has no clue who Noon is and from that he is driven back to this town to figure out what happened to his wife and there he sees Noon again and from there it does not matter what C.P. Harris does. She can put every obstacle in their way such as that amnesia and these two are going to be brought back together even stronger. It's definitely one of the best books that I've read so far not only in the storyline but also in the writing. Moving forward I do want to talk about one of my favorite sequels of the year that is going to be Natalie Kanya's A Dish Best Served Hot. I read A Proposal They Can't Refuse I believe last year and I absolutely loved and enjoyed it. They should be read in order. A Proposal They Can't Refuse was the first in the series and while I think that A Dish Best Served Hot can be enjoyed on its own, I would tell you if you want to get the most out of the Vega family because this is their series, you get to understand who Papa Vega is and how he is so meddlesome and how much he cares for his grandchildren before getting into A Dish Best Served Hot. I would tell you to read A Proposal They Can't Refuse. A Dish Best Served Hot is the one where I would tell you it absolutely does not suffer from second series syndrome. It is funny to boot. You have a male main character that is a veteran and he is suffering from PTSD. It is his second chance romance. He is a single father returning back to town to take care of his daughter. He ran across his, his high school flame who is juxtaposed to him in her mission. He owns a construction company with his grandfather and his family and he is kind of the enemy in terms of gentrifying the neighborhood and his ex-girlfriend is a community activist trying to do what's right for her people. This is Latin X romance where both of the female main character and the male main character are both uh, Latine as well as the author that has written this. So if you want to support and you want to read something that has purpose as well as laughter and a good time, 
a espresso pod is gonna be the one for you. Thinking about a new release that I have not read from, but I am dying to read, which I will be rectifying that very soon, it's going to be Daniel Allen's A Curvy Girl Summer. I have expectations to read this this month in July because, get into it, this is a stunning book. It is summertime. I know this is going to have all of the vibes. I was a little bit nervous because I believe this is Danielle's first traditionally published book. Anytime we cross over into that land, it leaves a little something behind in the indie space. But I have heard nothing but great things from this, which really should come as no surprise because Daniel Allen hits it out the park every single time. A new release that'll be future coming that I am highly anticipated is going to be Candy Shop by Kenya Gory Bell. I need her to publish this right now like I am on her arc team and I am begging for her to like send me the sneak peek even if she has to send it in chapters I am dying to see what kind of shenanigans Candy can get up to I believe this is probably the fifth or sixth in the series we've been uh, teased enough that Candy and the Sheriff's romance is going to be angsty it is going to be a damn good time because Candy gives that man the blues she is essentially the town drunk and she owns her business but she's in everyone else's she is the gossip queen and she is meddlesome and that provides issues for the sheriff of the town they are in two opposite families who do not see eye to eye and always run up against each other but they had a little bit of dalliance in the past and they're boomeranging it and bringing it back so i cannot wait to get my physical copy when i see kenya in august but before that give me the digital copy stat because i need Need it. Shoot it right into my veins. I need candy shop. Whew. This next one, the most disappointing book that I have read pains me to say it. When I tell you I assumed that this was going to be a five star, there was no way that you couldn't tell me anything different. As a matter of fact, I was reading it. I was about 66% in. I was moving and grooving. I said, okay, five star coming your way, Sophie Lark. That is Bloody Heart. Yeah, if I haven't seen my Brutal Birthright reading vlog, go check that out because I had the highest of hopes. Like this one was going to be on a pedestal. I thought I was gonna love it so much that I went and got it signed by Sophie herself. Like that is how much I had committed and invested into this book. And like I said, it was trending. It was going to be one that I preached and put on a pedestal from the heavens up above and told everybody, hey, read this. However, Sophie did me a little bit dirty. She took it somewhere that I was not expecting it to go and it really deserved a sensitivity reader for someone to tell her, hey, that's not the move. Don't do that because you're gonna piss some people off. And me, I'm that person, I'm pissed off. I thought I was going to love this book until we got to a point where the female main character said something in her head that I just didn't feel sit right with me. It wasn't something that I thought a black female main character was going to say. Actually, I knew a black female main character wouldn't say because, hey, I am a black female character um, in my own love story and you could never. And then to follow it up with an act of something that tied into that, that just really would have triggered me. Yeah, this was this was problematic for that reason and that reason alone, which brought it from a five star to a two star. And it really probably should be like a one and a half, but because I loved so much of this book, I left it out of two. But biggest surprise now, 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 now. Didn't think that this was going to be a bad book. Just didn't think this was going to be the banger that it was. And that is Ashley Jade's The Devil. Now y'all should be looking at me like, listen now, how didn't you know? Like everyone says this one is going to take you by storm. Don't have no expectations because your expectations are going to be wrong. That still doesn't let me know that the surprise that I was in for would shake me to the core like that. Like this book here, is one that you absolutely have to go in ignorant and blind. Like you have to go in with not a clue. And even if you had a clue, your clue is going to be wrong. Because I was like, okay, well, I also have the second in the series and I see that there's two people on the cover and I feel like this is the way that it's going to work. It didn't do that. It This book didn't do that at all. Um, As I was reading this, I had DNF'd it twice, two times. I was like, yeah, this isn't going to be the book for me, but everybody else loved it. And I was like, let me push through. Baby, I was in for the surprise of my life. Like, I don't think another book has tilted me off my axis more than this one. And so again, if you're gonna pick it up, don't say I didn't warn you. 
let's talk about my new favorite author. Love to talk about her, Stephanie Nicole Norris. Uh, this is In the Pursuit of Happiness. This one is, I believe, the sixth book in the series. And I am going to be doing a series review on this because in, in the heart of a Valentine's Brother series, absolute favorite. Haven't read a better series this year. This one here, my second favorite of the series. Stephanie and Nicole Norris really put on for the culture. Like she said, I'm going to give you all not one, not two, but six brothers that all have different talents and attributes, come from the same family, have really good stock, are billionaires willing to shell out and give everything to their women. They are God-fearing men that love hard and play hard and know how to do it right. Stephanie Nicole Norris, you are a national treasure. Now, thinking about my new fictional cross, I know I just gushed over all of the Valentine Brothers men, but really the true love of my life right now is Julian Moore from Elegance the D. Now, 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 now. Julian Moore is a different type of brother. This man, he's a man and I love him. Julian is in a, a older woman, younger romance, and I love that for him. This is a sister's uh, best friend type of situation where Julian falls in love with Ella, who is 39, and she is a single mother of two, and he comes in and he takes care of her, her children, the household, you name it, and that's why I love that man. Julian deserves to be protected and I'm gonna I'm stand beside Ella. If she called and be like, hey girl, uh, such and such is trying to, Camilla trying to come back in the picture, send me to Addy, I'm down. We rolling together. Julian is that guy, love him to death. Newest favorite fictional character has to go to Shooter Graham from Eight Seconds to Ride. Shooter Graham is a gem. He is a one of a kind, split your side, laughing character that I absolutely adore. Like I could sit here and have him make jokes in my mind all day and I would just be giggling like a maniac because he is a fantastic friend. Um, he is a stand up guy. I just love what Ashley is doing. And the fact that she is putting him as a supporting character that has scenes in every story into the Copper Lake series, I think she knew. She just knew that this was the best character that she has ever written and that we deserved all of the books from him. Like, if she wants to give us a sequel to Shooter and Sterling, I'm gonna read it because I love Shooter that much. He is, if I could be friends with a character, it would be him. He is just a barrel of laughs. Now, back to bringing it down to a down note of something that is emotionally straining for me. Talking about a book that made me cry. At Sam's No Less. Tia Williams, A Love Song for Ricky Wilds, had me tearing up while my car was being serviced. I was getting my tires rotated and I'm bawling like a baby. This book here is probably my favorite book of the year. I know I talked about best so far, but really nothing is holding a candle to what Tia did in this book. And I love everything about it. This is a historical fiction book. It does have romance. This has magical realism. It is historic. It is beautiful and it is emotional. Like I said, I cried. And when you read it, you'll know the part where I teared up. Now, a book that made me happy, India Carter's Tempted by Danger. I love this book. It was a total shock and surprise to me. I've had this on my TBR and in my Audible uh, library for a year. And so I just decided to pick it up in a whim. And I don't think that I was overjoyed any more than I could be outside of reading this. Like just seeing that this book does everything from... Talk about, you know, family dynamics, seeing the opposite sides and how two people can be raised so differently but come together and support another. It had your 
High Spice. This was a dom sub romance that had a pleasure club vibe. And then lastly, the most beautiful books that I've either acquired or purchased for myself this year. Um, one, I'm gonna take a step back. I know I talked about Beverly Jenkins already, but I found this beauty. Um, this is Night Song. It is the original version. This clinch cover is something that I need us to bring back. I absolutely love this. So I was glad that I could pick this up on clearance, no less. Um, I went to a Polycon this year and QB Tyler's special edition of what was meant to be just called my name. It is gorgeous. Even as you wrap around to the back, absolutely stunning. And then I could not speak of beautiful books without speaking of Simple Vows by Asia Monique. It is still in the plastic, but get into this beautiful black woman silhouette with this gorgeous red ground, um, the gold writing. These are my favorite books of the year. This is some of my the most beautiful works that I have read from Anticipate Reading or just want to see on my shelves. So do me a favor if you could let me know how many books you've read this year and which one was your favorite. I would love that. If you do not want to do that, leave me a water emoji for QB Tyler's What Was Meant to Be and I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye.